Okay, Sara, are you ready? Yes. Can we can we have someone other than Sara do this? Because I can't I can't have Sara in the room right now. No, can we have someone other than Sara? Because it's been the fifth. This is our fifth episode, and it's really it's really becoming a problem. What? No, no. I mean, Sara, Sara. I mean, do you read English? Do you know how to read it? Are you able to read it? Like you're ruining the entire episode. Why? Shmaul. It's unbelievable. She does this every time. Can we replace her? Can someone? I don't want. To, I don't want her to be here. Are you slow? A little bit slow? Truly, really sorry. I've told you this ten times, fifth time. It's every time is the same. It's a problem. It's an issue. She's slow, Yanim. Shmaul. She's meandering. She does not. She just walks around meandering. What's the issue here? Okay. Sara. Uh, Mali, it happens. It's fine. No, but uh, no, she does this every Mali, time. Like it's Mali, getting Mali, to the Mali. end of it. She's very slow. I mean, Mali. SSS, we're going to slow, stupid Sara, I honest. No, you, bus. Shma'ul. So are you, are you going to do this right? What? What? No, but uh, no, she does this every time. It's unacceptable. Because you're, you're negative energy have, in the room. Let's, I know, but have you ever had anybody just be slow with you and just meander yes, around and my, just disrespect every, your time? Everybody I know, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, it's so fine. but if I'm, she's I'm slow, okay. what do we do? I'm okay. It's not her. It's the it's the, it's the, it's the technology. It's not her. It's technology. Sorry, are you gonna focus because we need to do this, yeah. or you want? Are you gonna leave? What do you what do you what, what do you think we should do? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think so too. All right, can I be honest with you about Sarah? Because we call no, her SS. We call it in the company. No, we call her I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know anything about Sarah right now. I like Sarah. She helped me with a jacket and she got me a mirror. So, no, but so I just tell you, we call her SSS, slow, stupid Sarah, usually. But th there's a reason why we call her that. I'm going to be very upset with you right now. <laughs> no, you're not. This is, a, this is a prank, right? Oh, it's a prank. We're just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> We just wanted, we just wanted to see your reaction. You're like freaking out. You're like negative energy. What's going on? Oh my god! I, was I wanted actually, to laugh so many I times. I was actually gonna get up and leave. <laughs> I know we're done. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I'm like, she's not Sarah. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! So this, we did this specifically because we know you're an advocate for bullying, and we so appreciate your energy here. Oh and it's alright. <laughs> I was like, no, no, I started sweating, and I'm just thinking, okay, and I was looking at you like, you, you save, do something. <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> rest in your hand, yeah, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I, I hated you so I know, much. I hated myself, too. I, I was like, you. I cannot. I was like, I can't believe, how did I not say this? <laughs> <laughs> like, um... I was hoping, I was looking at you, let's go. Like, I'm like, not you're doing done, You're this. like, negative energy, let's get the hell out of this podcast. <laughs> No, but seriously, the, first of all, her name is uh, not Sara, and she's actually incredible at her job. She's one of our producers, and the real reason why I wanted to do this was to spread awareness for bullying. Oh, God. And you guys filmed this? Yes, we filmed it. <laughs> and honestly, your heart rate is up now, right? You're ready. Uh, for ready for what? I was just mad. I need a moment. My, my you, neck started hurting. My, my stomach started hurting. I'm looking at him. He's not doing anything. Nobody's looking. A bunch of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my. You are listening to our podcast, Wingman Flirting with Life, sponsored by the Dubai-based community brand Monkeys Everywhere. I'm your host, your wingman, Ra'it Saadi. We have the one and only the beautiful Dubai celebrity. She has gone from a finance banking office to lights, camera, action, front and center as an actress, MC, and TV presenter. You have seen her on Abu Dhabi TV, NBC Shahed, commercials, and magazine covers. She is making big waves here in the Middle East. Please welcome the Cleopatra of our time. Miss Aww. Angie Kuan. Thank you. Oh, you guys. This is, I'm going to cry. This is so nice. Thank you. Seriously, thank you wow. so much for being here. And you know you're the Cleopatra of our time, right? I love that. I mean, now that, now that you said it, I'll take it. You know that I'll every celebrity it. has a title. Oh. Like, uh, I mean, Aretha Franklin, the soul, the, the, the queen of soul. Or, oh, but I like Cleopatra. Cleopatra. I love that. Maybe I should get a role as Cleopatra. Ooh, hint, hint. <laughs> Anybody listening, book her. She's, she's a great actress. Um, but I wanted okay. to, to ask you a little bit about um, the transition because we talk about how you went from finance and you transitioned to the entertainment world. Yes. Sir. But my question is to you is I read, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, you when you had your children or your child, you decided to 
start a new career. And usually that's opposite for women. Women usually, their career slows down or they stop a career when they have a child. How yes. did that happen for you? Actually, it wasn't immediate. Once I, I mean, step backwards, when I had my first child, I was working at Thomson Reuters. And you know when you, not, you don't know, but when you have your first child, you become so obsessive and you want to spend so much time and whatnot. And when I went back to work, there was like this whole, um, they were doing restructuring to the company. And they gave me an option to leave or stay and change my position. Um, and I remember I went back and I was, I prayed this tikhara, like what do I do, what do I do? And then I got this thought, let me just do a pregnancy test. And I found that I was pregnant with my second child oh, okay. six months later. So I took a decision to quit my job at Reuters and I opened my own store, uh, which was a furniture store called Ribabikia. Oh, okay, yes. So I had two babies, you know, I have that store, whatnot, but I just wasn't feeling, you know, I wasn't, it just wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me. So mm -hmm. I decided to go back to investment banking. So I went back to investment banking, had my morning job, had my two kids and had the store. Mm -hmm. And again, while I was doing, while I was investment banking, I, um, I will never forget, there was this day where uh, Amar's stock was going down. We wanted to, you know, bring our clients to, to invest more. And this guy started crying and he's like, I lost all my money. And I realized, oh my God, I'm, you know, this is like legit gambling. You know, you know I just, it just doesn't, wasn't me. So I decided to talk to my boss at that time and say, let's open a CSR department okay. and start giving back. Anyway, we did that, really enjoyed being the, part, the philanthropy part of it. And I was like, this is what I'm meant to do. Made a decision, quit my job and wanted to have my own show where I'm able to be someone with a voice that is loud enough to be heard, to be able to work with United Nations, UNICEF and, and sort of give back to the world. And then it was just, you know, that's what happened. Amazing. And, and having, did having children change that for you or did it? Uh... No, no, it didn't. I think, no, I think, it, it, you know, obviously I wish I made that decision before I had children, especially as an actress. It is not the easiest thing, but it is what it is. And you know how they always say it's so hard to be a working mom. It is very hard to be a working mom of course. because of whether it's the guilt or whether it's the time or whether it's not easy. But, you know, once this is what God wants. God wanted me to do it at this age. At, you know, and that's my time. Definitely. So I want to ask you something about uh, the physical commercial beauty standards that you mm -hmm. have. I mean, honestly, I think that you are stunning. Thank you. And I think you're beautiful. Thank you. And uh, we wanted to ask you your career. How much has like your your physical beauty? I mean, it's uh, according to commercial standards is what I think, because I mean, I worked at a modeling agency. How do much you think your physical beauty um, affects your career? And do you think that you would have had the same career if you were ugly? I think it's, if anything, and uh, Najwa, it actually was a problem for me. Really? Very big problem. Not because, oh my God, I'm so beautiful, <laughs> pity me. No, it's not that. But I'm always misjudged, always, all the time. You know, everyone that sees me, um, when they meet me after they've seen me on TV or on, on, on Instagram, oh my God, you're actually much smarter than we thought. Oh my God, you're much deeper than we thought. Or, oh my God, or some brands, they refuse to work with me. You're too sexy to to work with, you know, to represent this brand. So I, it, so it really affected the way I, I, I dressed for the longest time. I had to, you know, I told you, remember, tone myself down, yeah. go out without makeup and, and do so much to, to be, not to enjoy myself, which then I lost my identity in the process. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm in a different place, obviously, but no, it was not. I mean, beauty, of course, is important. You know, we're gonna say beauty of the soul and what and whatnot, but sometimes some people look at certain kind of girls with a certain kind of look that, that this girl will not, if she's this kind of pretty, she's not gonna be nice. If she's this kind of pretty, she's not gonna be smart. Yeah. And literally, even my husband, when we were first dating, when we had like our first conversation, he's like, oh, you're actually really smart. I'm like, yeah, I'm an investment banker. He's like, so why'd you act stupid? I'm like, I don't act stupid. Oh my God. You know, I, I would have know, left the date no, right now. <laughs> <laughs> the same way I would have left. married. I would have left if anybody talked to anybody like that, how I yeah, talked to her. I, I was leaving. We were, <laughs> we're like, I was like, I would have left. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I wanted to ask you about also beauty because a lot of women, I worked in the modeling industry in, in New York City. And it's so funny because the most... Uh, the level of highest body dysmorphia that happens happens amongst the models and the most beautiful people. It's insane how this happens. Mm. I um, have the opposite of body dysmorphia. I think I'm stunning, but in reality, I'm, I'm, I'm fat. That. And no, like, <laughs> I'm like the opposite. I think I'm gorgeous, but you I'm like, I look at in a mirror. I'll be like, why do I? I don't have the right to be this beautiful. <laughs> I think I'm beautiful. So I wanted to ask you about body dysmorphia oh. and in your field and how, any experience with that. I def I'm dysmorphic. It's really? my middle name. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, again, again, 
who you're talking to today, new year, new me kind of thing, is very different to who I was just a few months ago. And, you know, everyone always, my husband and my friends, they, I am dysmorphic and again, but I don't, but the way I look at it for myself is it doesn't have to be a negative thing if you know how to manage it. You know yeah. what I mean? So let's say everybody says, Angie, uh, you're so fit. I don't know what, I don't know what. So sometimes when I want to go on a diet or I want to work out too hard, anyway, everyone thinks I look good. So I'm going to let myself go at some point. So for me, being able to look at myself from um, a critical eye without making it affect NG, how she feels about herself, how she loves herself, could just be something that that's how I can control. Uh, that's how I feel disciplined. When I'll always look at myself and be like, oh, just let me here, I'll keep working out. You know, mm -hmm. I, but it does not, it has not changed who I am with, with people around me, but it is the way I can control myself. So I'll take it. I can be, I can look at myself and not see what you guys see, but it does not affect my confidence. It has not affected my confidence. If anything, it makes, it, it pushes me to be, to, to more, have more discipline, work out harder and, you know, and be able to balance my nutrition. When it comes to a point where it does affect which again in the model modeling, you know, modeling world and whatnot, you have that. But that again, we have to start going back to how you creating that awareness. Yeah. You know, mental health. I know there's a lot of talk about mental health no, now. And sure. it's now it's too way too much, calm down. But no, it's very important. Self love, self respect, self you know, when you whatever you take that happens to you, you take it in a way that to make it a, have a positive influence on on yourself. I agree, and I love that you speak about yourself in third person. Yeah. Because I do that too. I'm always like, I'm such a people pleaser, and I love you know people around me, making everybody happy and like entertaining. It's just part of who I am, my nature. But then I'm I always vouch for my friends and fight for my friends. And if somebody's getting a job, I gas them up. I'm like, why can't you do that for us? Why yeah. can't you do that? Why can't you? vouch for Ra'id, fight for Ra'id, uh, like make sure Ra'id gets what he wants. And I love that you said that in third person because you are also have to take care of NG. Of NG. And, and that's beautiful. And that's part of self-love when people yeah. forget to vouch and fight for themselves as well. Yes. So I love that you and said that. And actually my journey was that with, with this whole thing. So you know how there's like something called self-confidence and there's self-esteem. And the closer they are to each other, the more balanced the person is. Okay. So I've always had self-confidence, but at so many different phases of my life, I kind of lost my self-esteem, okay? And and now that I've been working on myself in terms of reading books, in terms of taking my supplements, in terms of um, sleeping better, in terms of taking care of, of the inside of NG, my self-esteem shot up like crazy. Because let's say, for example, you have this, okay? Um, and, I, and you don't take care of it, I don't know why, but you know, it's pretty and it's nice, and every, but someone comes and says, by the way, it's dirty. You're like, oh shit, it is dirty. But if every, and you're gonna start thinking, oh, it is dirty. But yeah. let's say if I take care of. Da, 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 da. There we go. Let's say, it's a live show. <laughs> <laughs> let's say if I'm constantly cleaning this, taking care of it, and it's so pretty, you know, it's, it's, and I know it's, it's intact. So if you come and tell me it's dirty, I'll be like, shut up, it's not dirty. Mm -hmm. I know I've been taking care of this. No one's gonna affect me. And that's how I feel. That's what I feel has been happening to me. And I think it's very important that everyone learns that for you, having confidence is something, but having self-esteem and valuing yourself comes from work that you have to constantly work on yourself. Life is all about evolving. Life is all about putting in the effort just because you have a nice body doesn't mean you have to keep stop working harder just because you uh, have a job that you work from nine to six and you're so tired doesn't mean you can't learn new things. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't read books. Doesn't mean you can't have conversations, you always meet people, just because you have a group of friends, doesn't mean you don't need to make new friends that will add certain kind of value in your life. Of course, self-assurance is so beautiful. I mean, there's one <clears> TikTok <throat> that I love of this uh, boy who goes up, like, I wake up every morning, and look in the mirror and tell myself, I am beautiful, I'm intelligent, I'm smart, I'm incredible. And then when I leave my house, I don't need somebody to tell me that because I've already said that to myself. Yes, 100%. I love that. 100%. Absolutely I like that love one. that. Yeah. yeah. So it's always self like self assurance yep. and just being, you know, self aware is amazing. I'm going to ask you a hard hitting question. Are you ready? You're going to, it's, it's a, uh, we, do we have, if we have to step in, we can step in. <laughs> but this is a hard hitting question. If we need to step in, manager, I see your managers in, in the room. Uh, we can definitely step in. But um, I'm going to tell you a little story about my life. Okay. I, I fell into the trap, I fell in love with someone and found out after two months that they were an escort. Just waiting for your reaction. I want to see what reaction you have. 
This interview keeps getting weirder and weirder. Right? يعني مش عارفة خلاص مش فاهمة ايه اللي بيحصل هنا فين. So I wanted to ask you yeah. if you had a daughter. You, I know you don't have a daughter. She came up to you. She's like, I want to be an escort. What would you say? Camera off, please. <laughs> <laughs> you would probably break the camera. Uh, um, I mean, look, to each his own, obviously. But why would my daughter want to to do that? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I, I would assume that these women doing that, they need money or they come from a family of abuse or I, like, I'm sure the people, you know, I've watched a few documentaries on, on, on this topic. And it's never really a, just a normal girl coming from a normal, healthy family that has, you know, working parents. It's never yeah. like that. It's always, there's always something. So I really hope that if I had a daughter, she wouldn't want to do that because it is, um, again, there's nothing wrong with every profession. But this is a profession that's, uh, it's, um, what's the word for it? Um, I don't know how to say it without sound. I don't want to be too open-minded that it's not okay and... Of course. You know what I mean? But that's but a battle That's a battle a lot of people battle with because there are in life like a black line, there's a white line, but then there's a gray line. And many people debate the gray line. They sit here and they debate. Like, listen, I mean, if this person is clearly has money now, is like making a lot of money, they have a beautiful car, they have a great penthouse, they have all the diamonds and all the designer stuff, but they continue with this work because they believe that it is an exchange and it's okay. No, I, I don't know. I, I find that very hard to believe. I really, you know what I mean? You're selling your soul. You're selling your body. You're selling, I really highly doubt that, uh, that you know, I think 90% of women would, if they had the choice, they wouldn't. Now, some of them maybe took the easier choice. They could have learned something or they could have done a, you know, a, a job that would make them much more, much less money. Yeah. But I really, uh, well, from what, you know, Maybe I'm ignorant. Maybe I don't know. But from what I would like to believe and from what I've heard and what I've seen, I think it's not a choice that would be made 100% by a woman or if she tried it once that they would continue because, and again, you're selling, but you're selling yourself. I mean, sometimes you even do a job that, like a commercial or whatever and you feel like if, if someone just um, or did something that you felt you had to take down from what your belief and your ethics are, It would destroy you. So I don't think. Oof, I know. I mean, let me tell you the truth. Yeah, is yeah, I yeah, actually, I actually, I actually <laughs> think. I mean, I was heartbroken mm -hmm. by my situation. So obviously, it's to me, it's not a very positive thing. But I do battle with the whole like, it's two adults and they are consent consenting. So it's like I battle with that, you know. For those yeah, two I, just, I just don't think the woman is. I don't. From what I would like to believe, and how, what would make me go to bed better at night, I just don't think that every that these women that are doing this for a living are actually happy with it. Some are forced. Some have some people behind them. Some have, or, you know. I just don't think it's it's very difficult as a woman. It's very it's it it's it's heavy. It's very it's heavy. heavy. And look, for example, she fell in love with you, and I'm sure she would much rather be with you, right? <laughs> Then, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, I'm too much sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I, right? I'm too much. My energy is too much. I have one more hard-hitting question, and you okay. can choose to not answer if you if you feel too much. If, if I feel I'm like if, if it's going to go where I think it's going to go, I'll make you stop. Tell okay, me. Okay, and if I'm not here to provoke you, I'm not here to make you uncomfortable, but I'm here to push some buttons for the sake of entertainment. And you're an entertainer. You're an actress. Yeah. So you know, you know who likes to push buttons? Here on Wingman, we push <laughs> the buttons. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, do you think... That women hide their true body count. Body count? Yeah. What do you mean body count? Body counts how many people they've been with <laughs> in life. <laughs> <laughs> This is a lot. Adios, amigo. Ah! <laughs> And you're my favorite guest, I swear to God. I don't know. Listen, <laughs> by the way, I'll be, honest, I'll be honest with you. I think we, we've, you've gotten the hardest questions. I no think we've, shit, Sherlock. We've gotten like, we've, <laughs> we've gone really hard on you. Yeah, not that I've, you know, but yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, society and yeah. What, what? <laughs> She's like, CPR, please call the medics, please. Oh, my God. But why? Okay, let's talk about this feeling. Why are you like when I speak about this abroad, people are so chill here. I feel like people are not that chill. People get 
nervous, they get scared about their image and what they, so no, why are you feeling not, this way? No, me, to me, it's not an image. For me, honestly, and I always say, and actually we have a problem, me and Najwa, me, my problem, me and my husband, is that I always want to come out here and say the most controversial things. I want to say things as they are. But again, I am not me alone. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter. So I like when that. I speak, I will affect my father watching, I'll affect my husband, I'll affect my kids in the future. Do you know what I mean? So I don't speak for myself. I like that. I speak for them as well. I, you know, which is, I won't say unfortunate, but we live in a society that, you know, is all about whether we like it or not. It's about judgment. It's about traditions. It is, it is, it is, it is. And at the end of the day, I need to, you know, put myself out there. So I am a public figure that, you know, other daughters are going to look up to me. Other wives are going to look up to me, you know, and I, I, I have to respect that. If I had a daughter, I'd be very proud if she looked up to you. Oh, you are doing a great job. Thank you. And also, you're being so kind to me while I'm really putting you through the ringer here. Mm-hmm. Hardcore. So, you, thank you. I was kind to you when I didn't leave. I just because, you know, I, you know actually, I would have left. But do you know something? What? You know what went through my head at that time? I just remembered. Because yeah. you told me you're friends with Kinda. Yes. So, I swear to God, I made that connection. I was like, if Kinda loves him so much, there is no way he can be such an asshole. There is no way. So, <laughs> I kept giving not. you the, you know. You're right. Absolutely. I, I okay, no, have absolutely. never. I've actually, this is acting. And I love acting. I'm like you. I love <laughs> acting because I leave my body and I like become you someone hell, Yeah, you not, freaking left your body, dude. I you le- left your heart. You left your soul. <laughs> <laughs> you left your soul with what you did to that poor girl. Oh, my God. All right. So, are you ready for some games? Yes, some sir. Some fun I'm... things? I just, I just wanted to ask questions. I like not, it. No, you know what? I other love Other podcasts have been asking. And I love it. And I'm, you know, and I'm so happy because every time I go on, a, on, on an interview, how do you balance life? How do you do that? And I'm, you know, and I just really didn't want to do the same Khalas, thing again. we heard about your soul. We so know I'm you're amazing. Happy. We so know actually, you're amazing. Give, give, give me more. Oh, hello, sir. Give me more. more. <laughs> uh, the questions are over. Sara. <laughs> Sara, <laughs> let's go. Do you love acting? Oh, my God. So very much. And, very and much. Is, does it fulfill some part it's of your everything. soul? It's everything. It's therapy. It's therapeutic. And it's, uh, I would say, so I've, you know, when I first, when I, I used to write a lot and everyone would, t- would ask me, if you were to write a book, what would it be called? And I immediately would say Diary of a Schizo, because oh. I always believe I have so many different, and everyone that knows me knows I have so many different na- nationalities, uh, <laughs> char- characters that I, and, and personalities that unfortunately I was, not unfortunately, due to life, I could not be these people. Um, so acting allows me to do that you know i can live different lives i can be different characters and yeah. you know you live the whole thing i haven't still had the chance to do that because i'm also again been always i'm put in the same roles most of the time uh and what that, are those roles are you typecast of course i'm typecast that as, I'm typecast well, as, as the love interest? As, as the pretty yeah love interest the pretty girl i don't know what i mean there was my first role was amazing where it was i was a serial killer you know psychopath but again she was also the pretty girl and <clears throat> and that, but uh, that's why at Oabi School for Girls, it was very, it was, I was a guest star, it was very short, but it allowed me to be something else. And a lot of people liked me in that role a lot because they finally saw that I was acting. Most of the roles before, my friends that know me very well, they'd watch, but, like, but that's NG anyway, like what's the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really am waiting for that role that just takes me completely away from NG and to explore a whole new life, a whole new background, a whole new character, a whole new persona, a whole new you know, body language, um, but I love it so much. It's the hardest thing for me to do because I live in Dubai and all acting is in Egypt and as a mother, it's very hard to leave. And uh, But when I get that call for a role, you you know, the other day, I remember I, I was walking on the beach and I got a call for a role. I ran home, like rakatin, thank you, God. I didn't end up happening, but I, but that's how I felt. I oh, was so grateful. Excitement and you're I'm so grateful. So grateful to when I get a role. But I can't have tied up home. Okay. So I mean, if you would you ever consider acting in English and doing Hollywood? Who do, who doesn't? I'm sorry, a lot of people <laughs> would, would you What? I mean, you, of course. You wouldn't mind doing that. Well that, that's that's the dream. Oh good. Yeah, okay. that's the dream. I can and make I think a couple I, calls if you'd like. Can you? Of course. Yeah, oh, no, we'll talk okay. after we'll talk after this podcast. Let's do that. Um, uh, and do you have any like dream co-star actor that you'd want to like uh, be in a same like scene with? No, have, like- to be honest, I'll tell you something. I'm too small to to have you know. Obviously, there is a dream of you know having DiCaprio, Brad, you know the people that we Rami Malek. You know what I mean? Of course. But I just and I I love dreaming, but I. I'd also want to say my dreams out loud like that because like calm down, you know, get out of that, you know. Just, don't calm down, manifest yeah. and also manifest, like, yeah. I mean, manifest. If you were 
nobody, you wouldn't be sitting next to me. Oh. Uh, you I are don't. somebody. Somebody very important. Somebody very beautiful. Thank um, you. The last question I have for you before. We're done? No, we can do more. Okay. No, no. Uh, so the, the question I have for you is on your obituary. What do you want to be known for? after you leave this earth. You know what's so funny that I always say that my mm -hmm. dream for myself is that when I pass away, I want when people meet my, you know, talk to my, meet my kids and say, your mom was known for um, giving back in terms of I, I want to open my own orphanage. That's beautiful. Uh, but not a normal orphanage. Like I want to build how like I want to have like a house, like a, let's say like a villa, you know, like a house where I can have people that live a life of a, 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 ha a home. As a mother, I, 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 f I felt that, God forbid, if I die, there is nobody that will ever love my kids as much as, as I do. So true. And when I look at the, so you know, you know when, I, yeah, when I look at these orphans, and now there is a lot of them, I hope that one day I can give them at least the feeling of that love that it does exist and it's, I don't want it to be like in an orphan a center or whatever. I want it to be homey. I want it to be that and I want to be known for that when I'm gone. I <clears throat> back you. I support you and I'll be Thanks. with you whenever you're ready for that. I'm here to I'm help you the whole way through. So now you're helping me in Hollywood and you're helping me in my orphan. There we write go. Them, write them down. And can we also be friends or is that? Because it's the first time. I mean, you're not a bully, so yes, we can be friends. <laughs> right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, but definitely. Uh, first of all, I mean, thank you so much for even like I approached you at a festival. I ran behind you like a creep. Yeah. And then I came up and I like pitched you, give you the elevator pitch. And I was like, I'm new here. I came and and I and I love you and I think you're an amazing person. Would you mind coming? In and you said yes. So I really, really, really thank you. Thank you're you. amazing inside thank and you. out. And I just want to tell you that we Monkeys Everywhere has a gift for you. Ah. And uh, we want to just give you a gift from the Monkeys Everywhere brand. They're a community-based brand here in Dubai. They have a like fun, baggy Billie Eilish style fashion. Wow! Like just oversized. And Ooh. this one is similar to the shirt that I'm wearing. That and you got so some cool. stickers for your sons. Oh my god! Thank so you so much. So feel free much. to open it and look at it. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Definitely. Oh look at that! That's Yankee, the uh, mascot. Name? Yankee, the mascot hmm. of the company. I like the I like the packaging. Oh, that is so cool. Tag us Thank when you. It's a very like baggy, Definitely. big style. Oh tag us God. when you wear it. Love it. If you're at the gym or hanging out at home, whatever, just tag us. And also we have another gift, oh. and this gift is one for you and two for your sons. That's so sweet. Thank you so. Oh wow, you guys went all out. <gasps> What's that? That's the sweatpants you were supposed to give me. There we go. We could, you could have, you could I could have, have worn them. I could have worn them. them. No, but you look stunning and beautiful. Right and there. your outfit is amazing. That is so cool. This is, this is what? This is mine, right? This is yours. Come that is on. so cool. Thank you so much. And I travel a lot, so I always need sweatpants. That's good. So, Thank yes. You. And then there are two the shirts. Thank you. And hopefully they're the right size. But they're, they're supposed to be oversized. Big we and like oversized. Thank you, guys, so much. Thank like, fashion's you. really going in that direction. Oof. What is that? I think it's a, is it this it's the same, right? No, it's, uh, it's a different here, huh? It's, it's, uh, it's a <clears throat> That is so cool. Yeah, and it says smile on the back. I love it. I think I'm going to take this one actually. Sorry. <laughs> You're like I'm not giving this to my children. <laughs> Thank you guys. So sweet of you. And Thank I you. think there's one more for There is more. One. Oh, that's the same? All right. There you go. Thank. You. Thank you so much. So these are for you guys. And just obviously, this is a thank you gift for coming on here and being so gracious for put for like being such a good sport. We pranked you. We asked you hard hitting questions. Yeah. We like you were about to leave seven times. Yeah. Thank God you stayed. <laughs> and uh, just before we end, I just want to see what's next for you. Would you like to plug anything? Would you like to promote anything? What's mm -hmm. Angie doing next? Angie is um, working on herself. Learning, loving every part of her journey. I've, I've come to a point where I'm, for the first time, really enjoying the journey to wherever it is I'm going to go. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm enjoying every day. And, and that's really you. like from the bottom of my heart. Well, on Wingman Podcast, we back you all the way and we are Thank your you. fan. And we are very excited for your future. And I'll just like to end with saying that good energy is contagious. Go out and spread it. Thank you for watching oh and listening. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> that was so much fun. That was good. You so much it. fun today. You <laughs>